Greetings, RC Model Geeks. And here we are in the semi-clean shed. Yes. Hey, mate? Yeah. We've done some good work here. Yeah. We've got a whole bench that we can fit a brand new plane on. Look at that. And here it is. Now let's get the shelf. Oh, yes. Yes, here it is. And here it is. This is the DHC-1 Chipmunk designed by Dennis O'Brien in 1971. Mm. Now this is a, uh, a plan pack <coughs> bought from, not bought from actually, uh, sent to us by Sarek Hobbies. And we're going to do a build video on it. But this mm. is the pre-build video really. Mm. Um, we're just going to go over a few things, show you a few things on it and stuff like that. So it's a 68 inch wingspan plane, all balsa construction, and there's quite a fair bit of balsa. Um, yeah, and like I said, it's a plan pack, so you get the plan and you get some laser cut parts. Uh, back in the day, you would have bought the plan and you would have cut out all of the parts yourself. Um, but with a plan pack, you get the difficult parts cut for you. Hmm. Um, what you don't get is like strip wood and stuff like that yeah so if you need sheeting and other things uh, that is uh, extra from the plan pack hmm. they do supply a cowling and a, a canopy a vacuum formed canopy uh, one of the things that Sarek do is they've got their own uh, vacuum forming company uh, so the vacuum form stuff is uh, quite nice so let's have a look at uh, some of the parts, shall we? First of all, mm -hmm. and move that out of the way. So let's have a look at the cowling, and there it is: glass fibre cowling. Very nicely made, gotta say. Mm. Uh, it's got panel lines. Um, Moulded into it and faster mar marks and stuff and air inlets and and all the stuff you're going to require for your scourish looking model. Hmm. Next thing is the canopy. There it is, nice and big. Hmm. I'm not going to uh, unpeel it for its uh, protection, but it's nice to see all the protection on there. Yeah. And that is a big boy. Uh, it's got all the panel lines moulded into it again. So that is very nice. Mm. The next thing you get is a pack of laser cut wood. And there it is. Now, for all you Chinese companies out there, this is how you do your laser cane. Yes. All right. I will slide this little baby out. There you go, there's one of the laser cut sheets and all the part numbers are, li are lightly etched. Yeah, they're not cut all the way through. No. They're just lightly etched and they're on the part. So I can remove these pips or these bits. Bob's your uncle, I know which bit's which. Yeah. Here's a bigger part. That's one of the formers. It's done in two parts, obviously to fit it on uh, on the uh, on the wood sheet. Uh, that bit will obviously come out of there and glue onto there. Mm. It'll be interesting to see how accurate the cutting is when we come to put that onto there. Mm. Very nice. So here we go. Thank you for buying this Sarek Hobbies wood pack. The wood has been stacked in roughly sheet length order rather than sheet number order. This is to reduce the risk of damage to overhanging pieces of bolster during delivery. And Colin's got a runny nose. Before building your model, please reorder the sheets numerically. They may be up to three pieces per sheet. One, two, three, four, one, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. There you go. And that was nicely packed. It was, it was packed in bubble wrap as well. Yeah. 
so uh, very well protected. We're not going to take any more of this out at the moment, but you get the ribs, um, you know, and f all of your formers and stuff already cut. Then, now I don't know which is part of the plan pack or it's an extras, but we've got this with it. Loads and loads of sheet wood in various sizes, various thicknesses, stuff like that. And also some spruce, some nice sheets of spruce or strips of spruce going down to smallest sizes. as well. So like I said, I don't know whether that is part of the plan pack or whether that's an extra option or whether Sarek sent it to us because they knew we were building it and we'd need the wood. Mm -hmm. um, and this doesn't really uh, help us uh, at all apart from tell us what there is of it. There's eight sheets of uh, 16th by 4. Blah 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 blah. It's all there. Mm. And uh, I'll pack this away and we'll have a quick look at the plan. Okay. Be right back. Right, let's have a look at the drawings, or well, the plan, as it likes to be known, hmm. for this uh, chipmunk. So here's the fuselage. It's got a side view and a top view, basically. So there's your side view. Now, this, uh, this fuselage is made up in two halves. So you basically make a top half and a bottom half and uh -huh. then glue the two parts together down the middle. Now the whole fuselage is done with planking, uh -huh. which is basically long thin strips of wood yep. all stuck next to each other. And you can see on the drawing here they've got the lines drawn in to simulate that planking to give you an idea uh, that this is planked. Right. Okay, so you see you basically build up the bottom with the uh, formers in it and then basically plank the whole lot. And once you've done the two sides, you glue it together. That would neat, wouldn't it? Yeah, it should be fairly simple. Be nice. Look nice, that. Hmm. So what else? What have we got on here? Um, the tail. Let's look at the vertical fin and the rudder, shall we? Uh-huh. Which is here. Now, this rudder is built up with a solid centre core. So you've got a thin sheet centre core and then the ribs are stuck on either side mm -hmm. to give you that, that look of a, you know, a ribbed uh, structure. Uh, so that's fairly easy to build. Um, the vertical fin, that is slightly different. Uh, that is just built up as a, like um, a built up structure with sheets on either side of it. All pretty easy stuff. Now, if you've never built from a plan before, it's like, what does all this shit mean? Mm. You know? Um, and there's no instructions, mm -hmm. people say. There's no instructions. I don't know how to build this. Mm -hmm. Well, all the info is on the plan. Mm. It might not be in writing, but it is on the plan. Hmm. For example, let's look at this former here, yeah? It shows the direction of grain of the wood. Yeah. Yeah? That's what these squiggly lines are. It's the direction of grain. It shows that it's in two parts. That solid line across there. That part and that part are separate. Yeah? Because you've got to make two halves. Hmm. Yeah? Same as all these down here. Yeah, these are just put together like this because it saves space. Mm. Yeah, these are all separate formers. Mm. Yeah, wood grain again, direction of grain, a line down there to show it's two separate halves. Mm. Simple. What else have we got on here? So let's have a look at this centre section here, this fairing over the wing. 
You can see here the grain is drawn in again, showing the direction of it. Grain is running that way. And if we come down here, you'll see why. Here's a, uh, a sort of a cutaway drawing of this area here. Like I said, all the information is there, you've just got to find it. And you can see that this centre section there is curved. All right? Now, if the grain was running the other way, the wood wouldn't bend. Hmm. Yeah, it's got about a bend around the curve. Yeah. All right, so you need the grain running that way to get it to bend like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you can see it here. There's a nice curve there. And on this cutaway, you can see it also shows grain again. So it's showing the, the direction of grain for each bit of wood. Yeah, like there's a bit under here, which is underneath this area here. And the grain is running the opposite way. It's coming out towards us like that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all the information is there on the plan. you just got to study it. Uh, what else have we got that's, uh, that's quite uh, obvious? Yeah, I mean, see, these are the tailplane uh, uh, ribs here. And they basically, they just put them one on top of each other, yeah, to save space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might look slightly confusing, you think, oh, well, yeah, which, 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 which is what? But it's just done to save space, yeah? Mm. You know, there's five separate ribs in there, but they're just laid on top of each other. That's the way it is. Mm. Uh, what else have we got? <clears throat> dotted lines on a drawing. Yeah, obviously a dotted line on a drawing is showing something that's underneath another bit. Yeah. Yeah, that you can't see from the outside, for example. Yeah, so you've got vertical formers here. See these dotted lines? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's showing the formers. It says F10 and a dotted line. So you would know that the former F10, which is over here, mm -hmm. yeah, goes in that position. Right. Aye. And that's, it's dotted because it's inside the fuselage, yeah. it's not the outside. You can see all these lines running across here. Yeah, that's just showing the planking on the outside of the fuselage again. Mm. It's giving you an indication of what's there. Yeah. You know? Um, you were meant to sort of know roughly what you were doing when you're building something like this. You know, it's not a beginner's model. It isn't. You know? I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't attempt it. Uh, what else can we show that might be of interest? Yeah, I mean, obviously this was designed for a 40 to 60 motor, and back in the day you'd have made your own uh, exhaust. And as you can see, it says silencer box made from 20 SWG brass and half inch tubing. Must hmm. be silver soldered. Yeah. And that would have gone in there. It's to get everything inside the cowl, you know, because mm. it's a scale plane. You don't want a big exhaust hanging outside there. No. Obviously, we're not going uh, glow. We are going uh, electric, so we will make some modifications around here uh, at some point. And we will probably make some part of this removable mm. to get a battery in there. Cavernous fuselage. You shouldn't have any problem getting any size battery in here. Mm -hmm. um, what I might do is make the canopy slidable. That's a good idea. Like it was on the full size. Yeah. yeah. So it would separate here, slide back, and then you can maybe lift out the cockpit area and put the battery in. Hmm. That would be my plan. And I mean, looking at this plane and knowing how small the motor's going to be, you know, this battery's going to be quite forward hmm yeah so yeah that's what we'll probably do obviously we can't make this part removable because there's a massive uh, fiberglass cowl in here yeah yeah up to here so our only real access is in through the cockpit area hmm. to get our battery in 
Uh, let's slide it down. Ah, uh, this also uses hidden hinges. Uh-huh. Um, sort of like we did on the, um, on the storch, really. Mm. Very similar kind of, of principle. You have, to, you have to make them. Uh, these were made out, or they were saying use formica. Mm -hmm. Formica sheet. Uh, to cut your, your hinges and then you have nut and bolt through to make the hinge work. And you can see the hinge line is actually right back here. Yeah. Yeah, and there's the front of the uh, the elevator there, or the rudder, whatever it is, it's the rudder. Yeah, uh, the hinge line is set back. And the whole thing's like hidden hinges, you don't actually see them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and all of the hinges are done like that on this uh, plane, on the elevator. Uh, a very sort of similar on the uh, on the wing as well. Tail wheel here, it's a fixed tail wheel, and they show you how to make that again. Um, you know, modellers need lots of skills. Yeah, this is cut out of a tin plate and piano wire, and you would have soldered that bit of bent metal that you're going to make out of tin plate on to that piece of piano wire there, mm. and it ends up looking sort of like that. Mm. Sort of how the full size was. And here you've got this is the rudder horn made out of piano wire again, some brass tube and a bit of uh, brass here for the um, for the horn. You would have bent all that up yourself, soldered it together, put it in the plane. This is a hidden horn again. you won't see that because it's down in the fuselage. Yeah. Right, I'll get the uh, the other drawing out and we'll have a look at the wing. Okay. Right, so here is our wing drawing. Now they've given you uh, a cutaway of what the general construction of the wing looks like. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you get an idea of how the whole thing sort of works. They won't do it for every position, but it's just a general idea of what the construction will look like. So you can see we've got grain again, so that's the grain of your rib and also the grain of the rib on the uh, flap or the aileron depending on which one that is. Mm -hmm. You can see it's hidden again, we've got an overhang here which hides everything uh, when everything is connected up and to that end it's also got the hinges for the flaps and the ailerons here. These are made out of formica again, or they were originally. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see here they're bottom hinged. There's the pivot points. Yeah, so very similar again to the storch in its methodology yeah. of how they worked. And here is the horn where the push rod would connect to move either the aileron or the flap. There's the flap horn there. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so all the information is there. And over here, it shows you how these four mica parts would have been assembled. Fairly simple once you look at it. Hmm. Yeah, you know, you've got to have some modelling knowledge, you know, yeah. um, and then it becomes fairly easy. Now, on this plane, it's from, like I said, it's from 1971. Right, one interesting feature um, of this era of plane was the linear servo. If you look here, you can see it's got two attachment points on the servo and it doesn't rotate. These uh, these arms on the servo actually slide backwards and forwards, hmm. and there was two two arms on each servo. One would go one way, and one would go the other way. Um, brilliant! I haven't seen them for years. Hmm. The last company I saw making those was uh, Fleet Control Systems uh, that, that made linear servos. I always thought they were a brilliant idea. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I know that's what they've got drawn in here. Um, Big old things they were as well. Look at that. So yeah, I mean, there's not a lot uh, else to show you at the moment. Tailplane here, ribs in it, 
load of ribs, blah blah blah. Pretty simple uh, kind of stuff. Um, undercarriage over here. It's upside down though, Cole. Yeah, I can't get. Uh, yeah. I have to. Uh, there we go. Try that. Yeah. Undercarriage, simple bent uh, piano wire again. With rather than using uh, saddle clamps, you made your own saddle clamps out of uh, a bit of metal there, mm -hmm. and bent them round and screwed them in. Uh, yeah, I, I like it. Hmm. I like it quite a lot. So yeah, that was a quick look at the um, at the plan pack of this uh, chipmunk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be building that probably from uh, Monday uh, onwards. It looks like I've got to buy some more uh, bits of wood, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, not quite sure. Need to work that out, really. Need to go for everything and see what's uh, missing or not missing. Hmm. But, I mean, maybe some of it, on some of the, um, the sheet wood we've got there, you're meant to cut the strips out of it. Mm you know, to make strip wood and things like that. I haven't got a, a strip cutter, um, so I might either buy one of those or uh, just go and buy the wood pre-cut. Hmm. I uh, don't know yet. We'll see. But we'll certainly try and make a start on this on uh, on Monday. Whether we will is another matter. Hmm. Yeah, wicked. Uh, like I said, it's electric. Don't know what motor I'm putting in it. Don't ask. I've got no idea yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's it really. I'm going for the traditional way. I'm not going to put servos um, uh, in the wing panel itself, you know, for each aileron and each flap. I think I'm actually going to go for the traditional method of the bell cranks. Hmm. Um, you know, I want to build this as traditional as possible really, but obviously, you know, electric. Hmm. And uh, I have no doubt that this was a nicely designed uh, plane. Hmm. So, yeah, rock and roll. Yeah, as I say. Yeah, you're excited, aren't you? Oh, see. yeah. Oh, hey. uh, so, yeah, like I said, that's it. Right. <laughs> so, if you've got any questions about plans, if you've seen anything on this plan, um, maybe you have a question about it or whatever. Oh, that's the thing they show, of course. They also show um, colour scheme and stuff and, and where the roundels go, you can see here. They're drawn on for you. Where coloured strips would go, like here, it shows here, yellow band, five inch wide on both sides. Boom, them down there, but not on the flap. So, you know, all the info is there. you just got to look at it and look at it and look at it. It's not just the writing, mm. as I said. It's also how the thing is drawn. Mm. Uh, now this did come with um, it come with a photo pack All right. as well that you can buy extra. Hmm. Um, I'll put up a couple of these photos uh, now just to let you see what you get in the uh, in the photo pack. Mm -hmm. And they're coming up right now. Right. So there you go. Hmm. That's it. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you all in part one of the. I don't know what we're going to call it. Sarik, Sarik Hobbies, uh, Dennis Bryant, DH1 Chipmunk <laughs> Plan Pack Build. Wow. Yeah. That's a mouthful. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll optimise that one. Yeah, I would, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. See you all in the next video. Cheers, though. Cheers. Bye from Matt Collin. Bye from Captain Rob. Bye. Thank you for watching Captain Rob's RC Model Geeks. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click that like button. If you want to see more of the same type of videos, don't forget you can subscribe. If you want to support us, you can use PayPal. 
paypal.me forward slash RC Model Geeks. If you want to contact us, you can email us rcmodelgeeks at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.